and the day when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam blessed this earth with his presence is a day which is the day of noor the day of illumination for this earth and as it is said for the sayyidna yahya alaihi salam in quran surah al maryam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded was salam alayhi yawma wulida wa yawma yamutu wa yawma yub'athu hayya and peace be upon yahya alayhi salam or the prophet john peace be upon him the day he was born and the day he dies and the day is raised alive so it is for sayyidna yahya alayhi salam and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending salam sending peace on the day when prophet yahya alayhi salam was born and in the same surah al maryam in the verse 33 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded for the sayyidna isa alayhi salam that isa alayhi salam said was salam alayka yawma walidtu wa yawma amutu wa yawma qub'athu hayya and peace is on me the day i was born and the day i will die and the day i am raised alive so this is for the prophet sayyidna isa alayhi salam so quran sends salams and peace on the day when prophet yahya alayhi salam was born and on the day when prophet isa alayhi salam was born so my brothers and elders that's why the day is blessed when yahya was born alayhi salam and the day is blessed when isa alayhi salam was born and the day is blessed when sayyidul anbiya imamul anbiya khatmul anbiya muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam was born so the maulid of prophets is celebrated in quran so the maulid of sayyidi rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and the day of maulid and the day of birth of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam is blessed day for us and is the day when sayyidi rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam was born was monday and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam used to fast on the day of monday and it is narrated in sahih muslim in kitab us sayyam that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam was asked anna rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam suila an sawm al ithnain he was asked about the fasting of every monday somebody asked ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we observe that you are doing fasting on every monday what is the reason behind and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam replied fa qala fihi wulidtu wa fihi unzila alayka rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam said replied that i fast on the monday because this is the day when i was born and this is the day when revelation was wahi was revealed to me so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam in one way or other because of the shukr of his birth he was fasting on the day of monday so my brothers my elders and my sisters the day when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born is the day of shukr and is the blessed day when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam started 
his life on this planet and after 40 years Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam received the revelation and he started that da'wa he started that mission and he he started invitation to the universe to the mankind that come to the way of Allah fafirru ila Allah come to the way of Allah and you know what Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did during his 23 years time of his risala or nubuwa as Quran introduces with some of the attributes of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashshiran wa nadhiran wa da'iyan ila Allah bi idnihi wa sirajan munira wa our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we sent you with the attribute of being shahid your witness wa bashiran you gave good news to the ones who are doing good deeds and those who have faith in Allah and those who have faith in akhirah and those who have faith in the revelation and those who have faith in angels and those who have faith in prophets before you and nadiran and you also guide people that if you will not obey the right path you will you will face adab you will face punishment in akhirah in hereafter and then wa da'iyan ila allah o my beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you invite people towards the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and my brothers and elders in relevance of today's sermon i would like to mention about two cities those are you can say the representatives or the reflection of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's missionary miracles we often talk about many of the ghazawa like badr or uhud or khaybar or about other ghazawas and we often talk about the cities and the countries those were conquered during the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and even after the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but today we need to remember about two missionary miracles of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the miracles of da'wa the miracles of the attribute of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam da'iyan ila Allah and the beautiful way Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself was doing da'wah and the beautiful way the companions those who were trained by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam they did da'wah one was Habsha and the other was Medina when it comes to Habsha before any formal military or before formation of any formal Muslim state, people of Habsha accepted Islam and converted into Islam because of the invitation which was sent by Rasulullah and because of the 
that book which was revealed to Sayyidi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Al-Quran Al-Shakeem. And the second city is Medina. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent Musa ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu to Medina to educate people about Deen al-Islam and about Quran and Sayyidi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated as it is narrated by mother of the believers Sayyida Aisha as siddiqa radiyallahu anha that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Futihat al-Madaqinu bil-Sayf wa Futihat al-Madinatu bil-Quran Many cities were conquered with Sayf with sword. But for Futihatil Madina to build Quran. But Madina was conquered with Quran. Because Musa ibn Umayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu was educating people with the Quran. And if you remember the story of Usaid ibn Hudayr. And Sa'd ibn Mu'ad and Usaid ibn Hudayr was sent by Sa'd ibn Mu'ad who was cousin of the Sa'd ibn Zirara radiallahu anh, to stop Musab ibn Umayr doing dawah in Medina and Usaid went with his sword to stop Umayr Musab to stop Musab doing that dawah and he went there to kill him, to stop him forcefully. But when Usaid went there, Musa ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu said, just listen a few of my words. And if you consider them wrong, I will stop doing so. And but if you consider them right, you have to accept them. And he said, okay, it's a good deal. I will listen what you say. And Musa ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu recited few verses from Quran. And it was the influence of Quran, the nur of Quran, the nur of ayah, the nur of revelation which touched upon the heart of Usaid ibn Hudayr radiallahu And when he went back to Sa'd ibn Mu'ad, Sa'd ibn Mu'ad looked upon him from little far and he said, the man has changed. He is not the same which I sent to Musa to stop him forcefully. So that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Futihat al-Madaqin bil Sayf so today, when we are remembering the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and when we are celebrating the mawlid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is no better way to celebrate the mawlid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then the following of Sunnah of Sayyidi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The following Sunnah of Rasulullah and following the way of Quran is the best way to celebrate the Mawlid of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As it is said, it is commanded in Quran, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهَ O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tell the people that if you want to become the beloved in the court of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala فَاتَّبِعُونِي You need to follow my path. You need to do اتَّبَعُ فَاتَّبِعُونِي Follow my path. يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Allah will make you among them. Those are beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
my brothers and elders, my sisters, if you want to become the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what you need to do? You need to, you need to start following the sunnah. You need to start following the way of Sayyidi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did, if you, if you, I mean, make a summary of the life of Sayyidi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And if somebody said, ask me that, what is the best word to describe the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, especially after the first revelation, I would say, da'wat ila Allah. The way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spent his life was all the time inviting people to way of Allah and preparing them for the day of judgment and preparing them for the time when they will no longer living in this world but they will be living through their words through their deeds through their contributions through their way of life through the way they behave with people that will be remembered so that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faced lot of challenges because he wanted to change the behavior of the people, the behavior of the society and all the injustice which was very common in that society and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went everywhere, invited every single person whether in the eyes of that Arab aristocrats, whether those people were important or not, whether they were slaves, whether they were considered half humans by the aristocrat Arab society, but Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave them an importance and invited them as well and shared his feast with them. And just allow me one thing to share with you from my source of inspiration which inspired me a lot towards Quran, which inspired me a lot to read about Sayyidi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was our national poet of Pakistan, <laughs> Muhammad Iqbal. And if you go through his book written in Persian language, Javed Nama, Iqbal inspires you a lot and he says that a day Abu Jahl was sitting on the stairs of the Kaaba. That is a uh, dramatic kind of story in Javed Nama and he says that Iqbal flies with Rumi on different planets and in the heavens and he used to see a lot of things, a lot of events of the history and he used to meet with, uh, he met with the, many of the previous kings and emperors and Sufis and many other scholars in the heavens and even some bad people so he experiences and he shares through his poetic way and he says that I saw Abu Jahl in during the lifetime of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was sitting on the stairs of Kaaba and he was, he, he was addressing to Lat and Munad and to Hubal and Uza and saying them that what kind of religion is emerging in your village, is emerging next to Kaaba, is emerging near the Kaaba. Qadri ahrari shalakta. He, Abu Jahl, says about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that He never respected the aristocrats of Arab, although he is also part of that noble family. 
But Bab Kulistan e Habushtar Safta, rather than he's making friendship with the slaves from Abyssinia. And then he says that today what I am seeing that the grandson of Hashim is sharing his feast with his slaves. Those were bought with their humanity. So my brothers and sisters, people, those who are given less attention in the society, Rasulullah gave them the importance. And it is narrated when Abu Bakr Siddiq anhu, and when Umar al Khitab, Umar ibn Khitab anhu, and many other Sahaba from noble families and from noble lineage, when they used to call upon Sayyidina Bilal Habashi radiallahu anhu, they used to call Al Bilal who was Sayyiduna. And even in today's Britain, in, in today's Britain, it is not hard to say, but in those kind of Arabia, it was not a common culture to give this importance to, to the slaves. And this was a change which was brought by Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And before I end, I want to make my last point, and that is to remember one thing. That today we gave lot of importance and lot of attention to our monuments, to our historical sites, to our historical buildings, to our many of the historical forts and historical mosques. My dear Muslim brothers and elders, my sisters, do remember one thing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam did not build any monument during his lifetime. The monument, I mean, which cannot be called a monument, but for understanding, was built by Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam and it was renovated or rebuilt after that many times and that was Kaaba and Sayyidi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam built the Samal Mosque in Medina which is called Masjid an Nabawi a Sharif and even the building which was built by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was demolished during the expansion of the mosque in the time of Sayyidi Umar radiallahu ta'ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not build any monument, any fortress or any building or any merit as a symbol of his life or as a symbol of his contributions or how to remember Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but what he built he protected the last book and the second thing he built characters among his followers he did not give you any huge building, but he gave you Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu. He did not build any fortress over there, but he built Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu. He did not build any monument of generosity, that how to celebrate generosity. Here is a hand built with, with that fancy and with that very complicated architectural way or this uh, to this, this stone or this mountain or this hill is converted into that kind of monument. He did not build that kind of monument to promote generosity. Rather he gave you the character of Osman ibn Affan radiallahu He did not build any huge campus or any symbolic majestic building for the knowledge where you will go and you will stand there and you will take a selfie. No. He didn't build that kind of monument, but he built the character of Ali ibn Abi Talib So what today we need is to do more focus on the way of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that is the way of developing characters, building characters, building morality, building excellence in the character. If we can build Characters, then maybe 
even our small monuments will be respected in the history but if we can't build characters if we can't build those kind of examples if we can't develop those that kind of excellence then do remember our monuments our buildings our symbols have no worth in the history and will not be respected by the people coming after us my brothers and sisters this reminds us the way of sayyid rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam the rulers came after him those were trained by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam you cannot find best examples among the rulers like them the ambassadors rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam produced you cannot find best ambassadors than those and the level of adil level of justice sense of justice which rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave them and even in every field of life people those were produced by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam those were given trainings under the supervision of rasulullah and the suhba and the ma'iyya of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam were the best examples of their time and they have been the best example for all the times for us after 1400 years and even for the maybe next many many centuries after us so if i conclude all my points i would like to say that the celebration of maulid sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam is something very blessed as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent salams in quran on the day when prophet yahya was born alayhi salam and when prophet isa alayhi salam was born and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to fast on every monday and it is narrated in sahih muslim that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked why you fast on monday and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied because i was born on that day and revelation was revealed to me on that day and the second thing is the best way to celebrate the maulid is the any respectful way but the best way is to celebrate maulid is by following sunnah and by following the book which rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam protected and his companions protected and the protection of that book is in the hands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the best way is to do da'wah da'in ila allah today what we need is inviting people towards the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if we will follow that way allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us among the people those are beloved in the court of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the last thing we need to remember about dawa is reading and teaching and understanding and following the way of quran as it is said about madinatul munawwira that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that other cities and countries are conquered with saif but madina was conquered with quran so that is the best example of the mystery miracles of sayyidi rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and the last thing is focusing 
on our characters according to Quran and Sunnah and according to Kitab. As I said and argued that Prophet ﷺ did not build a monument, rather he gave you some living examples through the characters of his companions like Khulafa al-Rashidin al-Mahdikin Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'in and other companions those who are trained under the, under the supervision of Sayyidi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and my brothers, elders and sisters before I end I just want to make one apology that uh, in the country where I live I speak English as my fourth language of course first is Punjabi second is Urdu third is silence and fourth is English so if I made any grammatical mistake and if you find any confusion uh, among any translation or uh, any wrong sentence uh, you can ask me uh, any question after the Juma prayer and we can discuss it uh, but uh, uh, what I wanted to say was about our uh, today's responsibility as a Muslim and uh, before I end I just want to say that uh, during this blessed month of Rabi Awal we need to recite more Salawat on Sayyidi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what we need to do is to uh, if you have some good books about Sirat of Sayyidi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you can gift those books to your neighbors and before gifting before giving to your neighbors or before giving to your uh, children or your friends of course we need to read ourselves you know so that is very important and that is the best way to show your respect, show your love for Sayyidi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And also we have to organize gatherings to invite people to discuss about the seerah and about the love and about the message of Sayyidi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhaladina amanu Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa maulana Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin wa ashabi Muhammadin wa azwaji Muhammadin wa barik wa sallim Wa akhiru da'wana Anilhamdulillahi rabbil alayhi